yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I love the days of analog. Let's listen to the tape hiss. Get that hiss. That's cassette four track, I think that was actually. It might have been real to real four track. I can't remember now. <laughs> it's episode sucks. It really sucks. The sucks. A fuss and chops and sucks. Episode sucks. Ugh. Welcome to the Dumb Down Atheist Podcast, the show that rings everybody when they're not home. <laughs> I'd like to say thank you straight off, I because I thanked him last week for right stuff for doing my five-star review. I've only got one so far. Come on, please, please. Someone else do a five-star. Even if you hate the show, just do a five-star review, please. Please. I'm asking nicely. Because you heard Jake Farwarton last week, and the more people that do it, the more I'll go up. Which will really help. It really will. Come on, please, please. It's been a bit of a, a shocker of a week this week. Here in Australia. Oh, and an apology straight off the bat to... Oh, by the way. Um, oh, God, I've got to write this down. Apologies off the bat this week, because I, I said last week in my Neil Armstrong tribute, and I said I knew nothing about him. You remember that? A dumbed-down atheist. You don't get dumber than me. That he was... Whether he was involved in bizarre finger-chopping-off incidents with tractors or thumping anti-moon hoaxes, but I don't think that was him who did the anti... He chopped his finger off. But he didn't do the anti-moon hoaxes um, bashing, because that was Buzz Aldrin. As far as I know, it was Buzz. Here's a Buzz. Ow! Oh. I'd also like to thank... This week we saw a breaking out in the downloads in different countries. Kenya. Kenya, mind you. Kenya... Uh, also, South Africa. Somebody from South Africa has started downloading the show. Congratulations. I don't know if your surname is Bota. I don't know, but good on you. And who else did it? There was... Um, oh, now I'll be in all sorts of trouble for forgetting who the other person was. Oh, yeah, Germany, where he said that, and US and Australia. Still no POMs. Where are the POMs? <clears throat> If I don't get any pommy downloads this week, next week I'm going to grab the ukulele that I bought my son as a present, and I'm going to tune it up even though I'll have to look up the chords on the internet, and I'm going to play George Formby songs until someone from Pommy Land downloads a show. We are getting to the half thousand mark now. Half thousand! Yeah! Wow. Ooh, a fret noise. String noisy. Oh, yeah. Sad news this week, too, uh, in Australia. Uh, we had five of our troops uh, killed in Afghanistan, in Afghanistan, which is really un fucking believable but what can you do? This is from Yahoo News. Um, Kabul, Canberra. Uh, Kabul stroke Canberra. Australia suffers its worst combat losses, combat losses since the Vietnam War when five troops were killed in Afghanistan, officials said on Thursday, prompting Prime Minister Julia Gillard to return home from the early from the regional Pacific Conference. Officials from the Australian Defence Force and NATO-led coalition said uh, three Australians had been killed in southern Afghanistan on Wednesday by an Afghan wearing a soldier's uniform bringing the number to 45 deaths uh, since uh, the NATO-led coalition uh, thingamabobs. 45, and five of them Aussies in rogue shootings this year. Uh, Australian officials later announced two troops had died in a helicopter crash on Thursday. So three Australians killed by a rogue uh, Afghanistani person. See, this is it's going to be it's not going it's, it's not good. It's no good. I, I have enormous respect for our very brave soldiers who go to places like Afghanistan and Afghanistan itself. 
because I know if it was me, I'd be I'd be hiding under a table somewhere, jabbing something sharp in my ear, and wearing women's clothing, a la Klinger from Mash. Klinger from Bangers and Mash, because I'd be too, I would be I'd be absolutely I'd be I would have to wear brown pants. That's how scared I would be to go to Afghanistan. I reckon I'd even be shitting myself flying over the top of it in a plane. Well, with a sting of things, yes, I would. And um, what else does it say here? <clears throat> Gillard would cut her things short. <laughs> uh, the alarming rise of rogue shootings is another attacks have increased and pressure on the coalitions to fast-track withdrawal plans. Under a current timetable, most foreign combat troops are due to leave Afghanistan by the end of 2014, handing security responsibility to their Afghan counterparts. Opinion polls in Australia, or as we pronounce it here, Australia, that's how you pronounce it, by the way, if you want to fit in, if you ever come to Australia, say, I love being in Australia, and it's spelled S-T-R-A-Y-A, Australia. And I used to love in the in the seventies too, during our cultural cringe years, that um, you know some foreign person would jump off a plane, and the first thing the press would do is say, "What do you think of Australia? What do you think of Australia?" I don't know. I've only been on the bloody asphalt for thirty seconds, but it looks okay, I suppose. Opinion polls say we overwhelmingly want our troops out, although Gillard has ruled out any early exit. Uh, we are there for a purpose, and we shall see that purpose through. Gillard said, in a very similar accent to that one. Australian neighbours New Zealand, New Zealand um, said last week that fosh and chups would be served at all times. No, they didn't say that. They said they would accelerate the withdrawal of its troops after three more were killed by a roadside boom. Ah, oh, bloody far out and freaking man. Um, Hunt. I'm sorry, what did you say? Hunt. Um, Australian Afghan forces are hunting for a man in an Afghan, uh, Afghan army uniform who shot and killed three Australian patrol soldiers at a patrol base thing at Urgazan, Ruzgan, Ur, 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 province, where around 1,500 Australian troops are based. 15 coalition troops have been killed in similar incidents this month alone. You see, I don't. I don't really. I'm just. I don't have the answers. I'm just a long-eared prick who's getting way too long in the tooth, and I just do a podcast out of this out of this back room. You pull it out of your ass more like, <laughs> not your back room. Oh, you're in, are you? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, yes. Okay. On. All right. I'll wheel Sit me, down. Yeah, I'll wheel me chair in. Hang on. I'll just get, I'll just get a bit comfortable here. Yeah, not too comfortable that you fall asleep like last week, all right? No, no, I've been, I've been, I've been up the doctor's and <laughs> I, I, got, I, I told him. Yeah. I said, I, I, he's giving me some pills. Oh, no. keep, keep me alert. Make me nice and strong, they do. Have they worked so far? I don't know. I can't get the bloody lid off the chair. <laughs> sort of stuck on <laughs> Oh, well, so they're not as strong as you thought they'd be. All right, now, just just hold your horses. Yeah, no, you, you're going to play me Spanish love song this week, aren't you? Yes. Because you you, 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 yes. you uploaded it to that iFile. Tunes. Thing, didn't you? Tunes. Yeah, those people have downloaded that. They, they want to join the show. Yes, I know, I know, I know, I know. All right, we will. I, pro I promise we will. And, um... <sighs> See, my, my old dad, um, who was a Second World War veteran, always said that, um, as, as many people have said, that when it comes to Afghanistan and the, uh, you know, uh, being up the Khyber Pass... Kick up the Khyber Pass! <laughs> all right, all right, just calm it down, calm it down. Yes, silly old jokes. Um, my dad, in the Second World War, uh, the, you know, when it came to the Khyber Pass there with all the tribesmen and the hillsmen and the, and the peoplemen. And he was saying, like, the, the British army, if you, if you, they used to say to the troops when they were guide, guarding, like, the, the bit, like, almost the gateway to it, they used to say, we don't go in and, we, and, and they don't come out. We, you stop them from coming out, but you don't go in because no one's ever been able to sort that mess out. And... With the um, with the British troops, like if you shot a a bullet into that area, you had to go and find the empty casing because the tribesmen there would make a new bullet from your bullet, 
and then as we saw like with the Russians, they went there and then how long how long did it take before all the tribesmen who later became like the Taliban and all that started owning all the Russian weaponry, like the tanks and all the things because they just we are, as I said, like I think the troops are really brave, but I, I can't see I can't see there's ever really going to be a solution because, I mean, if you really look at the motive behind the whole Taliban thing, you realise it's just they're fanatics. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't. Um, I can't see it. I don't know what the answer is. Ban all religion, but then yeah, that's going to work with them, isn't it? Let's face it. <laughs> Oh, there's static on the line. Anyway, <laughs> I, I, I had to read this. This was in the uh, Ballarat Courier last week, the Cracker Fat Courier. Because it all happens in Ballarat, you know, people. If you want to come from overseas, don't you worry about that Gold Coast. Forget about the Sydney Opera House or any of that stuff. It's Ballarat's the place to be. This is where it's all happening, mate. If you like cold weather and, and, and lots of cloud and rain... Come here. Although it gets hot in summer. When we're, actually, we're, when I used to drive up to Ballarat when I lived in Melbourne many years ago, all it ever did was rain. It didn't matter where you come from. It could be 38 degrees Celsius, which is 100 and something degrees Fahrenheit, wherever you were. The minute you got within spitting distance of Ballarat, the clouds would come over and start pissing with rain. And then eventually one day when we moved here, we moved here during one of the biggest droughts the place had ever seen it, and we I think we were six months before we even saw a spot of rain. Made up for it since, though. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it's my proud privilege to read from you for the Cracker, cracker Fat Courier, Ballarat Courier, warm welcome for a new nun. A new nun. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, being part of the community of the Sisters of Loretto is just what Natalie Houlihan feels she's meant to be. Now, I've got I've seen a picture of Natalie Houlihan, the nun. And um, did you ever watch MASH? Remember Margaret Houlihan, Hot Lips Houlihan? Well, think of the exact opposite of that. <laughs> she's a rare addition, apparently, in the headline to the Loretto community. They're finding it hard to find nuns these days. There are nun nuns. <laughs> nun. Oh, sorry. The 38-year-old was welcomed into the blessed in, into the Institute of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Don't see many of those these days. In front of a crowd of about 700 family, friends, bishops, and sisters at St Patrick's Cathedral. I'm ecstatic, Sister Houlihan said. This is what I believe God has called me to be. And in order to fully be that person, this is what I am choosing. Could be a bit of confirmation bias there, but I don't know. Catholic Bishop Peter Connors said he would hope this would encourage other win young women and men to pursue a religious life. I kind of fancy, in a way, dressing up as a nun. All right, I, no, no, come on, I don't mind saying that. I think the religious life might be fun. I mean, I was like it, you know, when they have the gay parades, you know, the Mardi Gras. There's always, there's always something very kind of disturbing and sort of fascinating, in a way, about seeing big burly men with handlebar moustaches that sort of look like Freddie Mercury on steroids dressed up as nuns. You ain't going to be getting none today, boy! That was my heart beating for Hot Lips Hula in hand. It's seldom nowadays, Bishop Connors said, very few men or young women, very few young, young, very few young men go into, or women go into the religious life. Oh God, I can't imagine why. <laughs> I really can't. That's me scraping the corns off my feet. Listen to that sound. <laughs> Uh, this, uh, this, this is the second sister that I have professed hmm, since I started here in 1997. 
Brought up near Warrnambool. Nice place, Warrnambool. If you do come to Australia, go to Warrnambool. We, we go and have our holes there sometimes ourselves. And last time we went to Warrnambool, we stopped at a little town called Lismore. You don't care about this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. And there was this pub in Lismore, and it was like a really old-fashioned pub, right? And, it, and, and we were hungry and everything, and we stopped. And it was Christmas in July, because here it's, you know, the opposite way around. And all these old deers, there, and there's these hicks were sort of playing country music. And there was this bartender who was like really, a real old-fashioned bartender. Like on the return trip, I said to him, would it be more uh, effective for me to buy the can of Jim Beam and Cola Mixed... Or should I get you to pour me one in a pot glass? What would be more economical? And he looked at me and goes, I don't know. I oh, sound like Ned. He goes, I don't know. You've got to drink it. Helpful little fellow he was. And they had, they had a, a lunch special, steak and chips. And I thought I saw salad there, 18 bucks. And I go, oh, we'll have the lunch special of the steak and chips and salad. He goes, salad? Where did you see salad? Who's put salad on the board? If I find out someone's put salad on the board... No, there's no salad. You get you get steak and chips. And you can have a sauce on it if you want. <laughs> he goes, we've got four different types. And I said, what are they like? He goes, it doesn't matter. They're all very, very similar towards each other. Basically, we'll pour we'll pour this stuff on. Anyway, it was good. Okay, it was good because we stayed in Warnable. And on the way, we went back through. And um, we got there, and I thought, because they had a blackboard out on the thing saying live music on a Sunday, and I said, let's go back, because it's like 12 till 3. But it was just a blackboard, because then when we got there, there was no one in there. There was just us. And I said, oh, have you sacked the musicians? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> and then I looked at the board, and apparently it was for like an ad for sort of February that had already been. And I thought, well, why are you putting the blackboard out? <laughs> you got to go to the Lismore Hotel on your way to Warnable. If you come to Australia, as I said, forget all that other stuff. Come down to where the country's at its coldest. Anyway, brought up near Warnable in Winslow, Sister Houlihan, <laughs> she sounds like she should have a, a Hawaiian lay around her neck, is not she? But as we know, sisters and nuns, they never get laid, do they? <laughs> is the only sister of five brothers. She graduated from the University of Melbourne with a Bachelor of Science? 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 Oh, really? And is involved in the education most recently in East Timor. I wonder... Oh, they're, well, they're Catholics, actually, so they're not... They're not too down on the whole... Um, well, they're usually down on the whole, as we know, but they're not too down on the whole... Um, evolution thing are they so i suppose they're okay with that which we had the um oh this fucking what's his name you know um the one who d debated dawkins oh why can't i remember his name oh him you know him you know the one and he said he said that the whole adam and eve story need to be taken with a grain of salt and that he embraces evolution george pell that's him yes yes go to hell with george pell and so you shouldn't really take that too literally. And then someone said, well, what happened to the whole notion of original sin then? Hmm? If you tend to believe that. And he also said that atheists can go to heaven. Yay! And Dawkins, I guess, made him look like a bit of a monkey. And he was another one, not Dawkins, the other guy, George Pell, who thought we were evolved from monkeys, I think, from memory. I better be careful because Catherine Davini wrote something about him because he made a joke as you would all know if you're in Australia, about. Um, we, were, we were training some young boys for the priesthood or something, and the audience all started to laugh. And she wrote some humorous thing about that. And then his lawyer people got onto her and said, we're going to sue you for inferring that, you know, someone of the Catholic diocese sort of thing might have an interest in young boys. I mean, what a shock. Anyway, he, as I think someone must have sat him down and said, have you heard of the Streisand effect? Yes, you'll grow a big nose and start wearing um, exposed chest sort of things and singing, on a clear day, you can see forever. No, the Streisand effect of the more you make, the more you advertise this, the more this is going to go against you. And then all of a sudden it was all kind of 
brushed under the carpet, although she did retract a, a sorry. I'd like to say a sorry to George Bell. I'm fucking sorry you're like you are! Sister Houlihan credited her faith-filled family for installing, instilling a love of the religious way of life into which she entered as a candidate in 2000. She must have got voted in, obviously. Well, I, I, I really can't understand for the life of me how, um, how on earth people wouldn't want to um, join the priesthood. I mean, it all sounds so absolutely feckin' wonderful, doesn't it? Why should we be scared of it? Can't really think of it myself, but here's a pretty good reason. Brisbanetimes.com.au Priest charged with abuse cover-up, 31st of Augustus. Gloop, the income poop, 2012. Tom Brennan, ah, to be sure, it's Father Tom Brennan, is the first Australian Catholic priest charged with concealing the alleged crimes of another. Tom Brennan is the first Australian Catholic priest charged with concealing the alleged sex crimes of another. He was the right hand man. <laughs> he was the right. He, ooh, he was the right hand man of a bishop. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do the joke about whether he had KY jelly in his palm. That's disgusting. Just jokes, just jokes, just jokes. Don't mean it, don't mean it. It's all alleged, it's all alleged. It's just jokes, just jokes, all right? Guess who don't sue? He was the right... <laughs> he was the right... <laughs> he was the right-hand man of a bishop. And one time, acting as a bishop, him, bishop, acting as a bishop himself, the same way I'd like to act as a nun in the get-up. <laughs> Super. But priest Tom Brennan made history... For Father Brennan, 74, was arrested and charged yesterday with two counts of misprecision. Mispreci misprecision. Misprison. M-I-S-P-R-I-S-I-O-N. Misprison. Of a felon. Misprison. Misprison. Is that what... Is that, that's if you get found guilty, you go to misprison. It's like a bit like the Miss the Maya Miss shops they used to have in Australia. I don't know if they've still got a Miss Prison. Hang on, I'm going to look that up. What's the true meaning of Miss Miss Prison? Um, Wikipedia says. Wikipedia says. I'm tooting again. I'm sorry about that. I, sh I really shouldn't do it. It shits me when I listen back to the. It shits me when I listen back to this full stop. But um, and give me a look here. Ms. Brison. Oh, hurry up, you slow bastard. Thank you. Ms. Brison of felony uh, was an offence under the common law of England and was classified as a misdemeanor. It's considered failing to report knowledge of a felony to the appropriate authorities. Exceptions were made for close members of the felon. Is that like why a wife can't testify against a husband? Is that something to do with that, is it? No, all right, I don't know. A family, a person was not obliged to disclose, disclose knowledge of a felony where the disclosure would tend to incriminate him of that offence. Development of uh, the modern law, this crime has been discarded in many jurisdictions. Oh, not where Father What's-His-Name lives, though, is it? No. <sighs> As I was saying to someone the other day, I tend to get my religious knowledge more from Father Ted. <laughs> Father Brennan, or the or the friendly Father X here in Ballarat, who shall be known as X, because of things that went on. Not that I'm saying Father Brennan is uh, innocent until proven guilty. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. So, I am no, no. I am not. I'm merely reading from the Brisbane Times. dot com. dot au. Okay. So, because someone said on the radio, it's either a great opportunity for. Uh, wrongs to be answered or for Father Brennan to be exonerated and cleared. Okay? And that's and I'm sticking to that. Uh, Father Brennan was in this prison. Failing to disclose a... Oh, I need to hit the word wrap on this bastard thing. Hang on. That's better. Uh, failing to disclose a serious crime relating to the alleged child sex offences by defrocked priest John Denham. 
See, they even admit they wear frocks. You see, what's what's the great difference? If you're in the Catholic Church, whether you're a nun or a priest, you'll wear frocks. Super. John Denon against two boys in the late 1970s. The offences allegedly occurred, occurred at St. Pius. I think they needed to be a little more pious, perhaps, in that place and keep an eye on what was going on. Or allegedly, 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 okay, allegedly. Newcastle, New South Wales, where Father Denham was a teacher and Father Brennan was the school principal, you know. Oh, would that be right, Ted? No, yes, right, no. Great show, Father Ted. If you haven't seen it, find it on DVD, torrent it, although I didn't tell you, don't you dare torrent it. No, that would be naughty. Father Brennan was charged with assaulting two boys by caning them. Oh, God, after they allegedly reported being sexually assaulted by Father Denham, now 70. Strike Force Georgiana Detective Sergeant Christy Faber also charged Father Brennan with eight counts of sexually assaulting a boy eight at a Newcastle church in 1984 and 1985 and two counts of assault. Dr. Bernard Barrett of the Victims' Rights Support Group Broken Rights Australia describes the charges as a milestone in Australia, as we pronounce it, S-T-R-A-Y-A, as a milestone in Australia. I'm sorry, can, I get a lot of downloads from America, so I guess you can actually understand what I'm saying, can't you? Or would you like me to speak more like the crocodile hunter? Oh, crikey, look at that! Oh, jeez! Swordfish! Now, what got him? A stingray, wasn't it? That's right. I always said one of his crocs would get him. I always said that. I said, you watch that. That bastard won't... Now Bindi's really coming along. She's got a show on TV here. I don't know if you guys have been treated to that sort of thing. Bindi's... What is it? Bindi's... Oh, uh, Bindi's something. A bit like um, Survive. It's a bit like that, where they make kids eat grubs and worms and puppy dog's tails. And, and I'm amazed just how much she really looks like Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's been homeschooled as well. And I want to know, is she as the fucking annoying in real life as she is on TV? <laughs> God love you, Bindi. They named her after a noxious weed here, I think, that when you walk on the lawn with bare feet, puts prickles in you. Yeah, that's her. Yes, that's exactly right. The charges were laid months after international publicity over the first American conviction of a senior Catholic priest for hiding child sex crimes by another priest. One of the hunter men who alleged Father Brennan caned him in 1978 after he alleged Father Denon had repeatedly sexually assaulted him at school thanked police uh, for a determined investigation. If this makes one person stand up and say, this is what happened to me, then I will feel better. I, I can agree with that. It makes me feel a little better, too, that finally some of this stuff is now having its day in court, as it were. Very much so. Oh, sounds like that rain's coming back again. Yeah, could be. Uh, okay, so that's the story of what's-his-name and thingamabob. But have no fear. Just when you think life can't be any more feckin' stupid than it really is, here's a little here's a little thing that should depress you, because it depressed me a bit, I've got to say. Um, just hold on a second, I will, I will read this. I'm just, I'm just going to check out my Facebook for a sec. See, people say you can't Google and Facebook and that while you're actually doing a podcast, but I find you can. I mean, it's a bit boring for people to listen to, but I find you can. <clears throat> now, I'm going to call this prick again I called last week, Mikey. I'm going to call him, hang on, I'm going to call him again, because I was getting really sick of him. Um, I want him to come and defend his stance on that fucking awful film, The Cabin in the Woods. And he shouldn't have to get away with it. Besides, if he's on the show, I know I can count on one more download, because his ego won't allow him not to hear himself. Hang on a sec. Absolutely instantaneous, that was. Uh, calling, calling. Can't hear anything. I can't hear anything. Can you hear anything at home where you are? Can you hear a damn thing? Oh, it's calling his mobile too. I tell you, this Skype's all right. Not that I'm going to do an ad for them. Um, at calling real phones, it's quite cheap. It's not bad. I spoke to Jamie DeWolf for about 
an hour and whatever the other week from Oz to America, and it was only about, I don't know, a couple of bucks. Let's see if he's in. I, I, I'm calling his mobile. The mo- person you called is not available. I can let them know you've called by oh, can you? text message with your phone number. Oh, if sex you message, eh? Text, yeah. Not before the tone, and you won't be charged. Oh, really? Any call charges apply. Oh, yeah. Proceed. Okay. I bet I'll still get charged for using Skype, After though. the tone, please enter to your number, including the area code, followed by the hash key. I, ha- I haven't got a number. I'm calling on Skype. They never give you a number to call back. The After other... the tone, yeah. please enter your number, including the area code, oh, followed f- by the hash key. Oh, fuck off. This. She, she had a broad accent, didn't she? She had a very broad accent. I mean, what would people from overseas think if they hear that? They say they all sound strange over in Australia. Australia! Now, please, tell some people in England to download this show, please. Go on, go on. I'll be your best friend. I'll see the recent call, see if I can get him on the other number. Because I said to him the other week, I rang you during the show and you didn't answer the phone. And he said, oh, well, no, because we don't actually have a phone plugged in. It's unreal, isn't it? Though they've moved house, so I guess it's... Yes, folks, the Dumb Down Atheist Podcast, the show where we call all sorts of people and they never answer. I know what you're saying. Why don't I pre-prepare it? No, sod you. I like to get people on, get, catch them on the hook, you know, off the hook. Nah, I'll try him a bit later. And uh, he was on Facebook before, and I was going to try and get him on that. Pretty sure he's got his little headset. Is he back online? Nah, useless. How dare people have a life? Okay, now back to this thing. Um, I'm still going to catch up with that priest too. I wish I'd brought his number down here. I should have done that. I should have go back and get it, actually. Oh, I don't need to, do I? Oh, yes, I do, because, yeah, that's right. He's got an unlisted number. <laughs> man, man of God doesn't like to be found. <laughs> here we go. Now, this is where they lash back. This is from the Huffington Post. So i got to admit, I'm a little bit... Little, perhaps a little bit doubtful with when I see um, Huffington Post stories, I tend to I tend to take them with a bit of grain of salt, if you know what I mean. Not that I'm not saying they're a wonderful online publication, because they probably are. <laughs> Catholic priest sex abuse. Father Benedict Grosch, Grosher, Grosher, Friars Renewal, Legion of Christ, National Catholic Register. Blah blah blah. blah. In a recent interview with the National Catholic Register, Father Benedict Groschel of the conservative Franciscan Friars, oh, they might be able to make me some nice hot chips, mightn't they? Or French fries, as you like to call them over there. Uh, of the renewal, uh, Franciscan Friars of the renewal said that teens. Actus juices. Oh, let me teach you the art of seduction. <laughs> oh, come and look at me, etchings. And that coming out of a teenager's voice. You wouldn't expect that, would you? In some, some sexual case, sexual, not occasions, in some fornication, for an occasion like this. They had champagne fornication like this. <laughs> in some sexual abuse cases involving priests. It has been close to a decade since an investigation into clergy sex abuse cases by the Boston Globe unearthed a shocking scandal and cover-up that rocked the foundations of the Catholic Church. Well, it might have if it hadn't, I guess, been for all those other allegations that rocked the foundations. Um, And around the world. Ten years may have passed, but the wounds have yet to fully heal in America especially in the light of the recent Penn State allegations, as well as the trial of Monsignor William Lynn, former secretary to the, of the clergy in the Archdiocese of Filthy Delphia, uh, Philadelphia. In light of this, the recent comments by Groschel seem both puzzling and jarringly out of step with current sentiments. Yeah, because he's probably half bloody feckin' senile. I mean... Not that I'm... No, don't sue me. I don't think you really are. I just said it as a joke. <laughs> I just... if I just The thing is, like, I noticed that in Father Ted. As I said, I get all my knowledge of the Catholic Church from Father Ted. 
and they had Mrs. Doyle. You know Mrs. Doyle who was in Father Dead? Well, if you don't, go and find it. Because Mrs. Doyle was always offering the priest cups of tea and biscuits. She goes, oh, go on, go on, have, have a cup of tea there. Oh, no, thanks, Mrs. Doyle, I don't think I will. No, go on, go on, you don't. With the bishop like one too. Oh, no, thanks, Mrs. Doyle. Oh, go on, go on, go on. You want a cup of, have a nice cup of tea. And then she'd say, you don't want to be Bishop Piggy in the middle, do you? No. See, I'm giving it a great wrap-up. you really got to see this show. If you haven't seen it, Americans, see it. It's worth it. It's fucking funny. Um, and the thing that you get from that was Mrs. Mrs. Doyle would do everything for Father Dougal McGuire and Father Ted. You know, iron their clothes and make sure their beds were made and uh, run around after them. And I've noticed that myself a little bit from even just priests in our local town. If you kind of get involved with them, they're always they're always putting the bite on you for something. <laughs> so I can understand that they're out of touch because they've just got sort of people who do everything for them. You know what I mean? Like a Catholic priest will give you advice before you get married, even though he's not married. But then I spoke to this this fellow. I should I should try and get him on. No, I forgot about him. He was a helper, like almost a priest, like an intern sort of priest. And I said, because hey, he was an Anglican or a Episcopalian, as you. Yankee boys like to call it. Uh, and he said, oh, no, well, you know, it's all well and good for you to sort of criticise them because they're not married and how dare they, you know, uh, lecture in, in sort of uh, about having a marriage. But what you've got to realise is us, uh, uh, Anglican, uh, pissed, us pissed Anglicans who are drunk all the time on the wine, uh, and pissed means something different here in Australia too. Pissed means you're drunk, not pissed as in, I'm really pissed at you, you bastard! Um, where was I? Oh, yeah, he said, well, you know, because we're married and we've got kids and everything, and we find we find it hard to uh, conduct our, our, our ecclesiastical work and stuff because we are weighed down by the weight of a family, whereas a Catholic priest has more time on his hands. Or, or as I said before, lubricant. But that was just a joke. That was just a joke, all right? It was just a joke, Joyce. Um, so, yeah, so they've always got the people doing stuff, so I'm not surprised they're out of touch with everything. Well, not out of touch with everything. <laughs> I mean, that's what I said the other day. I heard someone say, you know, God made us in his image and he gave us everything to play with like a child on Christmas Day and then told us not, not to play with it. I mean, how does that work? You know what I mean? He gave you the equipment and he said, oh, don't, no, don't be touching that there. No, 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 leave that, leave that bit alone. <laughs> That reminds me of an old joke. We were so poor in my family growing up that on Christmas Day, if you didn't wake up with a heart on, you'd have nothing to play with. <laughs> um, this is meant to be taken seriously. I don't know who, maybe by people that are fucking nuts, but... Uh, the um, um, Groschel was... Uh, no wonder no one wants to come on the show. And I tried... Oh, man. I... Mm, I, I, I went... I, I did this gig, right? I was going to say, yeah, priests always put the bite on you. We had this priest the other week for something my wife was doing. He came to give a chat about working with people. And the first thing he said to me was, would you like to come to the Sudan to do missionary work? You'll have to pay your own airfare, by the way. And I went, I'm thinking, and then he said, oh, you, I noticed you play guitar. You, you'd be fantastic. Why don't you come down to the to the group we have and come and play your guitar for us? And I'm thinking... You know nothing about me. Like I'm a full-on feckin' atheist, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't spit on you. No, that's not true. He was, he wasn't a bad bloke. But, but I'm just thinking, you've only just met me, and you're already, you want something. You know. <laughs> anyway, what was I saying? Um, oh, I can't remember now. It's gone now. Um, the uh, breakaway found in Jambers. I might have to play that bit back and listen to what I was talking about. In the National Catholic Register posted this week, Groeschel was asked about his work with the very conservative Friars of Renewal, a breakaway order he founded 25 years ago. The conversation took an interesting turn. However, when the editor asked about the 70-year-old, 78-year-old's work with sexual abuse perpetrators, uh, he said people have this picture in their minds of a person planning to... Uh, Hang on. Of a person planning to a psychopath. Have this picture in their minds of a... I'll read that the other way around. A psychopath planning to, Groeschel said. I think they've left a bit out there somewhere. Um, 
But that's not the case. I don't really know what that means. Suppose, he says, suppose, suppose you have a man having a nervous breakdown and a youngster comes after him. A lot of cases of the youngster... Oh, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, Dean Hutton. Just let me write that down for a second because I'll forget it. That was the bit I was going to say. Tom O'Toole, hang on. Dean Hutton. Hang on. Okay, just I've written that down now, so I won't forget it. Um, the conversation took an interesting turn, however, when asked about his work with sexual abuse perpetrators. Oh, okay, so he's not working with victims, he's working with perpetrators. Well, that just makes a whole lot of sense, doesn't it? Um, people have this picture in their mind, yes. A lot of cases, this is, oh, I can't believe I'm reading this. This is what I mean, it's a Huffington Post, so I get a bit sus on that. Uh, suppose a man, you're a man having a nervous breakdown, right? Which would make you very attractive to someone who's 14. I, I, I know myself when I see someone having a nervous breakdown, the first thing I think is I want to have sex with them. Really, I mean, really. I mean, you'd be the same yourself, wouldn't you? Especially if they were wearing a nun's outfit. Um, not that there's anything wrong with it. And then, after a man's having a nervous breakdown, a youngster, a whippersnapper, comes after him. Oh, crying out fucking loud. A lot of cases, the youngsters, youngster, 14, 16, 18, he says, is the seducer. 14, 16, 18. Oh, honestly, officer, I thought she was 18. Uh, no, sir, in fact, uh, she, or he as the case may be, was only 14. Oh, so you mean I needed to wait a few more footy seasons? Uh, well, I guess so then. And then if that person was your student or someone trusted in your parish, you think you shouldn't have been, no matter what age they were, should you? No, you shouldn't have, no. Oh, but I, I was having a nervous breakdown and this youngster came after me. It's true, kept chasing me around the streets. Kept offering me a lick of, the lo of their lollipop and kept offering me boiled lollies. What could I do? As some planet a bumper sticker, but strangers have the best candy, don't they? So we used to think it was some old perv uh, seducing the kids, but no, no, completely wrong, says Father Benedict Groschel of the conservative Franciscan Friars. Uh, people have this picture in their mind. Uh, yeah, I read that. Uh, press for clarification. I bet he was. The New York State-based religious leader explained that kids looking for father figures... Oh, God. Oh, please. Fucking give me a break here. Um, oh. Explained that kids looking for father figures might be drawn to the priest, to priests, to fill a hole. <laughs> To fill a hole. Sounds like he's dug himself a bloody great hole there. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, you ain't wrong. I don't know if I'd want to be in choir practice with him. No, you got that right. I'm looking around, if you know what I mean. Yeah, oh, I think I've dropped one of my candles there, you know. Hey, you wouldn't want to bend down and pick that up, would you? No, lights out by 11, candles out by 12, eh? Oh, God. Um... Oh, okay. well, I don't believe, I don't believe, you'd have to be, f I mean, oh man, who would come out and say this sort of stuff? I mean, maybe if you were joking, but it doesn't say here that he's joking. And even if it was joking, it'd be very poor taste. And to hear other poor taste jokes, folks, don't forget the Dumb Down Atheist is the podcast for you. Furthermore, Groschel expressed a belief that most of these, quote, relationships, unquote, are heterosexual in nature. And that historically, sexual relationships between men and boys have not been thought of as crimes. What, by Nambler, perhaps? Hang on, I've got to read that again. Furthermore, Groschel, ex Groschel, as he should be known, grosser, right, expressed a belief that most of these relationships are heterosexual in nature and that historically sexual relationships between men and boys have not been thought of as crimes. 
this just gets better and better, doesn't it? That's why I don't pre-read a lot of this stuff, because I like to be able to display my shock. <sighs> oh, God. If you go... This is him talking again. If you go back 10 or 15 years ago with a very with very with different sexual difficulties except for rape or violence it was very rarely brought as a civil crime what sex between men and boys wasn't what 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 is this guy going on about no one thought of it i need almost like some rescue remedy after that i think i'll go and get a packet of that chewing gum from last week four drops of rescue remedy no one thought of it that way. I'm inclined to think, in brackets, a priest's for on a priest's first offence in brackets sort of thing. They should not go to jail because their intention was not committing a crime. Oh, fuck it! This were my legal studies at school. They used to have a a thing called you know men's rear. <laughs> I think that might be very. I think that might be very popular in the Catholic Church, men's rear, uh, and actus rear, <clears throat> which were the two things we were taught in Year Eleven um, legal studies. That in order for a crime to be committed, you know, to be accepted as a crime, you needed two components. You needed men's rear, no shortage of those, and actus rear. <laughs> where first was the thought of committing the crime and the intention of knowing that it was wrong and mens rea, meaning that you went ahead and plunged in and did it anyway. And with those two things, you then could convict someone and find them guilty of, if they were found guilty of committing a crime. So what he's saying is there was obviously some actus rea, but not mens rea because it was boys rea, wasn't it? Or something like that. Fucking hell. Has this world gone completely mad? Uh, in fact, oh, fuck it up. in fact, the interview was published without comment in a National Catholic Register, and was significant due to the public to the publication's affiliation with the disgraced Legion of Christ Religious Order. That didn't seem to read right, but I think we got the idea what they were talking about. In 1995, the Legion was part of a group of investors who saved the National Catholic Register from closing. The powerful clerical order was also part of one of the most damaging scandals involving its one-time leader, the Reverend Marshall Maciel, the highest-profile Catholic clergyman ever to be accused of sexual abuse. Well, I don't know if that's true now, because... A lot of the time I see all those internet memes showing pictures of the Pope and people seem to be accusing him of, well, my, or is it more covering up with him? I suppose it's more covering up, isn't it? Yeah, I like, I got one the other day on the Facebook, what does it said with the Pope saying, I love it when boys blow me away with their devotion to God. <laughs> people don't care what they put on Facebook. They don't care, do they? No, they don't. So POMs, can can we please have some POMs to bloody download? Not only will I do George Formby, I'll even sing some Max Miller if you want. You know, why not? In 1990... I read that bit, didn't I? Yes. In 2005, the Vatican scrambled to minimise the damage done by revelations that the extremely influential Mexican priest had been abusing seminarians for a year. Yes, he was extracting semen, 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 semen from his seminarians. Uh, Groeschel is an influential voice in the American diocese and continues to maintain a high profile in the church, writing several books and appearing weekly on a religious television network. Now, I'd be lying if I said I know what that... Um, that network is, but um, yeah, hmm. uh, you don't know what I mean. The priest received a doctorate in psychology from Columbia University in 1971, and now lives in Larchmont, New York, where he assists with Trinity Retreat, 
a centre for prayer and study for clergy he founded. Trinity House stirred controversy in 2006. Yes, I imagine it probably did. When the press learned that New York priests credibly accused of sexually abusing children, but not legally convicted, had the option of a long-life close supervision program that began with a stay at the retreat. I wonder if they have internet access there. Might be an idea to go through their hard drives. Uh, anyone from law enforcement who might be listening? Might be an idea to just check to see. I bet I bet every time someone finishes using the computer there, they clean out the cache and the, uh, <laughs> the history files. <laughs> Only, that, I'm just joking. I don't really know that. I don't. No, no, I don't know that. No, no, no. It's just a joke. It's just a joke. Just a joke. All right, it's just a joke. No, no, no. I've never been there. I don't know these people. No, wonderful fellows. I really, truly. In the wake of community objections, the archbishop, the archdiocese, later removed Trinity ha Trinity House from the list of programs offered for from the list of the programs offered facilities, according to the Larchmont Gazette. Groschel is also a professor of pastoral psychology. What does that fucking mean? It's like it's like saying, I went to Bible college and I got myself a degree in divinity. Yeah, it means fucking probably nothing. Pastoral psychology at St. Joseph's Seminary, there's that word again, seminary, of the Archdiocese of New York. And remember, folks, quoting The Simpsons, women and semen don't mix. Hey, stop it! Bobby! Yes, Neville. Go oh, on, play me Spanish love song. Put it on. Need a bloody lightening up from all this bloody... Oh, dreadful bloody business going on here. Oh. I never knew that. Well, growing up, I was, I was a bloody altar boy, you know. Hey, nothing ever untoward went on with me. No, well, you're an ugly looking bug. I'll turn this off. Hang on. That's better. Uh, sorry. All right. I'll, uh, I'll, get you, I'll get your song queued up, Neville. Neville's Spanish love song, Nora, Nora, Nora. It's the Spanish Nutcase! When I met ya! Is this about Auntie Nora, Uncle Nev? Said I never would forget ya! Yeah, no, that's right, yeah. <laughs> but I let you slip away, and I regret that every day. Cause now I'm all alone, like a dog without his bone. Oh, Uncle Nev, that sounds a bit rude. Oh, Nora, Nora, Nora. Your appeal goes to the Cora. You're the apple of me, I love. Never be another. Nora, Nora, Nora. You're the one I'm rooting for. Oh, that has a different meaning in Australia, Uncle Ned. Oh, Nora, Nora, Nora. You're the one I'm singing for. Universal language of love, this is. Yeah, Nora, Nora, Nora. Please pick up that phone and call her. Would Auntie Nora's phone work in Bali, Uncle Ned? Go away, you're a bloody nuisance. I realise that I've upset you. What did you do, Uncle Ned? You wanted to buy 50 shades of grey and I wouldn't let you. <laughs> but I'm so confused up in me head because of all we done and said and a real man shouldn't cry but me eyes is turning red. Would you like to borrow me hanky, Uncle Ned? Nora, Nora, Nora. Your appeal goes to the Cora. Oh, Nora, Nora, Nora. You're the one I'm rooting for. Nora, Nora, Nora. This song I'm singing for you. You're like one of those love gypsies, Uncle Liv. Oh, Nora, Nora, Nora. Please pick up the phone and call her. Are you all right, Uncle Ned? Oh. oh, that bit sounded like a pop-off, didn't it? What? I'm in despair. Shut up, you're spoiling the song. Despair of old boots that I wear. I'd walk a million miles, get rid of the old beer bottles and broken tiles. Fix up our house and on your face I'd paint a smile. Would you dress her up like a clown? <laughs> oh, Nora, Nora, Nora. Your appeal goes to the Cora. Hey, what you heard here, Uncle Ned? Yeah, Nora, Nora, Nora. You're the one 
I'm rooting for her. I really don't think you should sing that with Uncle Ned. You know what I mean? Nora, Nora, Nora. A song I'm singing for ya. Hey, Nora, Nora, Nora. Pick up the phone and call her. Yeah, see, I'm not a snorer. Oi, vey! <laughs> yeah, Nora, Nora, Nora. Do you had to read the Torah? Oh, Nora, Nora, Nora. Life is so much poorer. Yeah, Nora, Nora, Nora. I grovel on the floor. Oh, Uncle Ned, you must really love Auntie Nora. <laughs> yeah, come on here and make it a big fool of yourself. Come over here, I'll bloody make a fool of you, you little bastard. Oh, you oh, bloody song. Oh, Uncle Ned, that hurts. Don't. Anyone can win an argument like that. No. Oh, that's, that's child abuse, that is. That's child yeah, abuse. No, it's not bloody child abuse. I'm sick of that little bastard, Jason. He, he, he spoils everything. He just, I didn't know he was hiding in the bloody... Control room when we done that song. Well, I got to admit, I did let him in. I, I felt the song was. I felt you did. It needed something. You know what I mean? Yeah, it needed a bit of bloody guitarist for oh, a start. That's nice. That's nice. It's gratitude. Bloody good. You got arthritis going on your ends, mate. Use me up or use me up for nothing. Wish I could have afforded the real bloody Gypsy Kings. That, that would have as been much if. much better. Yeah, as if yeah. So what's um what's Jason up to now with these TAFE cuts? It must be uh, well, must be really hard. For well, you me. know, I didn't. Before the Ted Bailey, the Premier of Victoria, took a bloody knife to this adult education and give it the fucking, you know, cutting back, I, I didn't really think Jason did that much, actually. Because he, uh, listen, listen, you know, I think it's just an excuse sometimes. It, these bloody kids, they don't want to go to school, so they send you off to TAFE, you know. He's supposed to be doing a course in some, oh, bullshit or another. He didn't show up for the whole time. And then his instructor said to him, oh, I believe you, you like to bloody uh, b -b 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 play the harmonica. Why don't you, why don't you write me a bloody term paper about that and I'll pass you. But what was he actually studying? Uh, engineering, I think. <laughs> so listen, if, if he gets a job, I wouldn't be driving over too many bridges that he's had anything to do with, that's for sure. No. And now it's time, folks, for the next instalment of the wonderful old-fashioned type new thing of the radio comedy Nev from Nang Worry. Yeah, it's about time you put something bloody decent on. It's bloody like watching paint dry, this feckin' podcast of yours. Well, I've been right up to my neck in it and I'm never in a flurry. I'm Nev from Nang Worry. Oh, I don't know. Yep, no, that's who I am. Yep, no. Is it safe? Wake up, Mr. Enamor Tree. Hey, no, no, the name's, uh, the name, uh, hey, boy, w w what's my name? Oh, I don't know, Uncle Nev, th 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 that injection they gave us keeps making me go off funny. It, it, well, calm yourself down, Jason. Yeah, that's it, Nev, Nev Nangers, that's my name. I demand to know, what are we doing here? Sergeant, have this name checked on our computer and get back to me. So, Mr. Whoever you are, you think it's funny hacking into a U.S. government website, do you? Hey, I don't know what you're going on about. The only ram I'm familiar with, mate, is the one that goes around bonking the U's. He thinks you're trig, Uncle Ned. <laughs> well, maybe you are, maybe you ain't. Can you deny placing a dirty bomb outside that building, huh? How dare you refer to Sheila like that? She's a beautiful old truck. It's just Jason didn't hose her down before he picked me up from the hospital. Well, here's the sergeant now with the information. Don't go anywhere, guys. <laughs> well, we're hardly likely to. We're both handcuffed to the bloody chairs. Yeah, my nose is itchy, Uncle Nev. I've been trying to scratch it with me tongue. First it made it all wet, but now my tongue's all rough and now everything itches. Hey, while he's gone, Jason, where the hell do you think we are? I don't know, Uncle Nev, but it's blooming hot. I say one thing, Uncle Nev. I looked through the wire of me cage last night, and you know how we're all wearing orange uniforms? Yeah. Yeah, and those funny goggles that we had uh -huh. on on the plane. I saw all these fellas down on their knees in the exercise yard. I think this is a holiday camp for Ali G impersonators, Uncle Nev. 
Hmm, <laughs> very interesting, gentlemen. So you are who you say you are. See, I told you. Are we free to go? Not so fast. It seems our meeting is somewhat serendipitous, wouldn't you say? Well, I would if I knew what it meant. Well, it seems there's a report of a certain Mr. Nangas and his young nephew at Tullamarine Airport in Melbourne trying to smuggle offensive weapons to Barley, I believe? No, no, I was I was going to visit Nora. She'd bug it off to Barley. I didn't know how long I was going to be there. The plumbing's rubbish there. Rubbish, son. Our operatives asked around your town of Nang Wary, and most people deny knowing you, except for the people up your street, and they think you bumped your wife off. Did you kill her? Did you? Did she know too much? That's just small-minded, malicious gossip. Oh, come now, gentlemen. Start cooperating us. I'm going to give you no food rations. Oh, no, Uncle Nev. We've got to cooperate. I've been praying in the direction of those white lines all week for me burger shakes and fries. Those lines point to Macker, not Maccas, you little goofball. Listen, there's been some sort of mistake. You've clearly got the wrong people. We're just a couple of country hicks. Ah, so you admit to being related to David Hicks. I see, gentlemen. Listen, sir. I've done nothing wrong in my entire life, I haven't. Do you deny being called the terrorist of Tarpina? Hmm? What's he saying, Uncle Nev? Well, it was a long time ago, Jason. I'm not that proud of it, but look... The grass grew back on the footy oval. I mean, it was me first ute. I mean, you know, I'm sorry. It was, it was, it was, it was a dare. Forgive me. I'm sorry? What's that, Sergeant? Hi, right, you're both free to go. What? What's that? What do you mean we're free to go? Yeah, we got a report from a Dr. Von Snitson Groovy. Seems you two wouldn't be clever enough to make a dirty bomb. He seems to think you couldn't even open a tin of corned beef between you. Well, you're going to fly us home or what? Hey, don't you think you've cast Uncle Sam enough already? Nah, we'll just take you to the mainland, drop you off. You'll be okay. Well, where the hell are we? Just say Havana looks beautiful this time of year, Mr. Frangers. I haven't been called that since high school. Is that in that report as well? <laughs> Is that what they used to call you at high school, Uncle Nip? <laughs> That's funny. Well, I've been right up to my neck in it, and I'm never in a flurry. I'm there from Nangwari. Oh, I don't know. Yep, no, that's who I am. Yep, yes, no. no, no, yes, yes, no. And stay tuned next week because um, <clears throat> next week's action-packed episode of Never from Nangwari takes place in beautiful Havana, Cuba. And if you want to do some homework before then... Can I suggest you look up this name, Susie Maroney? The name is Susie Maroney and put in swimming. Swimming from Cuba to somewhere or another. And if you ever have a chance to see the documentary Susie is a Fish, which you probably won't find anywhere, but you might find it on YouTube. I don't know. Oh, should I have a look? I should have a look, shouldn't I? Why not? Hang on, I'll just press this while I'm having a look. Okay, let me press that while I'm just having a quick look. Wait a minute. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, I wrote that thing down before, didn't I? That's right. Um, let me have a look. Su Susie is a fish. Hang on a sec. Susie is a fish. This is homework for next week, all right? Susie. Oh, shit. It's all in caps now. Susie is a fish. Not even a trilby. No, not a trilby. A cap. Susie is a hat. Just put Susie. The person you call oh, is not available. Ah, oh, piss off the then. You call by sending a text oh, message that's to your right. phone number. If you don't want to send a text, see, I don't think, before. I don't think he wants to fess up to liking that movie Cabin in the Woods. Susie is a money maker. Susie is a headbanger. So just some of the suggestions that Google hath given me. No, Susie is a fish. Wait a minute, Susie is a fish. Susie is a fish. Susie fish on deviant art. Ooh, deviant art. Hang on, Ooh, that sounds good, doesn't it? Susie, <clears throat> Susie, Susie. Yes, transferring data from deviant art. Tell them. No, come yeah, on. I was going to say before. Um, tell them about me new um, song we're going to do. The waltz. The waltz. How I met Nora. Yes, yes, I will. I will. I will. I'll tell them about that. Just hold no, on. No, come on. Hold tell them. I <clears throat> just need to clear my vote. <clears throat> Clear my vocal cords of the phlegm. Yes, uh, yesterday I... Yesterday, which was Thursday, today's Friday here. I don't know when you're listening to this. I don't know. Have this, Has this ever happened to you? Because I came to record a podcast yesterday, this podcast. And you know how things just keep getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse? So it was 10 to 9 and the missus said, I'll, I'll take the lad into school... 
uh, and you can get on with your thing there and, and I've got to go and meet my friend who wants to have coffee and so we're going to do that. And I said, oh, that's good, okay, good, yes, I w instead of yes, and you can take it and that's good. So I got this other computer, just cheap from a shop, refurbished it did, in order to do some things. And I thought, oh, just quickly, since it's 10 to 9, there's still plenty of time in the morning, I've got all day, I'll pop out quickly and get one of those cheap LCD screens from the old cash converters, right? So I went to look for my wallet, and I couldn't find it. So I thought, oh, okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all right. Um, so I, I, I had $20 sitting, $30 sitting in, in a tin, and I said, oh, well, I'll go and see if I can barter them down for the for that monitor that they only want $35. Luckily, I had the $30 sitting there that I'd agreed to pay for to somebody. And I thought, when I find my wallet, I'll take the $30 out of that. You get the point. And so, and then on the way, I know where the wife's car will be because I'm pretty sure I must have left my wallet in the car. Perhaps it's fallen out of my pocket. So I drove down and bartered the people down for the little LCD monitor. That was good. Then I drove back past my wife's friend's house where the car was parked and I, because I had a different car, which by the way, was almost out of fuel, and that was the only $30 I had. And I'm thinking, oh, I should have enough to make it. It should be all right. It should be okay, which it was. And I searched through the car, and I couldn't find the wallet. And I went inside, and I said to her, look, I've lost my wallet, and I can't find it. She goes, oh, well, you know, little the little chaps had dooners and things out everywhere in the lounge room. And I said, yeah, I know. I'll, I'll go back, and I will search for it. Uh, so, okay. So I came back to search for it and I pulled the house apart looking for it. And then I started saying to myself, it's not, it's really, it's not here. It's not here. And then I rang because the evening before I thought, where did I last have it? Oh, I know. At the supermarket when I dropped off those things. And so I came out and then I'm thinking, I came out of the supermarket and I get a bit puffed out because of my heart condition, right? So on the way back to the car, I sat down on one of the couches that was in the shopping complex and had a rest. And the, and the couch is the same color as the wallet. And I thought maybe it fell out of my jacket pocket onto that brown couch. And that's maybe why I didn't see it when I got up. And I'm thinking, oh, this is not looking good. It's not looking good for a God in the podcast. And then I searched the house and then I rang the shopping center. I rang the supermarket and they all went, no, not at all. No, not at all. No, no, no. And meanwhile, it's getting later. And then I thought, right, I'm going to have to think about cancelling all the cards that are in the wallet. And you know what a nightmare that is, because then you just don't exist. And so I searched the house, and then I jumped in the car, and I drove back to where the other car was while the other car was getting even lower on fuel. And then I searched through the car again, and then I went inside, and I said to my wife, I've now searched it, I can't find it. I can't find it. I don't know where it is. And I said... We're going to have to go and do one last search of everything. And we did. And we searched. And by this stage, it was now 11.30. And and the day was just getting worse. And then I wanted to come and record Nev's waltz for how he met Nora. And, and I still hadn't plugged the other computer in. And I'm thinking, I can't get this out of my mind. I, I won't, I'll, never be, I'll never be able to separate this. And now I'm about to ring the bank. And we checked on the website for the bank and no one had used the credit card. And we thought, well, that's a good sign, isn't it? And, and then after we just about to give up by quarter to 12, my wife said, would it be in this case here? And I found, I'd found this old case in a, uh, in a junk shop. It was an old trumpet case. And my son, who's only seven, had had my jacket on the night before for the five minutes I was in the toilet. He said, could I wear your jacket? And I said, no, you can't. And I, I heard him banging and thumping. And when I'd come out of the toilet, he gave me my jacket back. And it felt like there was weight in the pockets because the keys were in there. And I naturally thought everything's still in there. And I've said, well, that's the only choice. I've either lost it on that brown couch in the shopping center, which if I have, it's gone forever. And I wouldn't mind if the people took the money. Not that there was much money in there because I haven't got much money. But it's the cards. It's the cards. If I've lost the cards, it's going to be weeks and weeks. And I've only got three days left of my heart medication. And that means it's, you're going to have to come with me, I said to my wife, to the actual pharmacy. Otherwise, we won't get the discount on the heart medication and because you'll have to show your card. And I was tearing my hair out because it's really awful. You feel like a non-person. And it's weird, isn't it? Because you take your cards with you wherever you go in your wallet. 
And when you think about it, you keep taking them away from your house. It's almost natural that the law of averages says sooner or later, you're going to lose that wallet or someone's going to steal it and you're going to be a non-person. And that happened to a friend of mine because then when she came to go and get all her cards, no matter where she went, people would say, have you got any form of identification you could show us in order for you to get your new card? And she said, no, because my wallet was stolen. And to my best of my knowledge, like six months later, I don't think she's got all her cards back. So by this stage, I'm really like frothing at the mouth. And I'm telling myself, it's all right. You just got to accept. It's gone. It's gone. It's okay. It's gone. You'll get over it. You lot, you had your wallet stolen, you know, about 20 years ago uh, from a gig you were doing. It's okay. It will write itself. You'll get everything back. Don't panic. You, 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 you can, you can do this. You can do this. You can do this. I said to myself, and then a part of me was like, "No!" And the day's being wasted, and I'm not getting anything done. And then my wife said, um, "What about in this old trumpet case that's here by the piano? We got a fifty-dollar piano from someone, right?" And I thought, "Good for the kid, because you know, if he wants to." tinker with the ivories why not you know and i said but that's impossible because that case has not been opened like since i bought it if the if that wallet was in there that would be something of a miracle not really really a miracle and she flips it open and she pulls the wallet out and i said that little that little bastard he put that in there last night and it must have been when he said, Dad, can I wear your jacket? And we had searched every... We, I'd, I brought home a frozen cheesecake the night before from the supermarket. I searched the freezer. I searched the cupboards. I searched the bags that I take with me when I go swimming and everything. And I knew it wouldn't be in there. I searched everything. But I didn't think of the sealed box there because, it, well, I mean, why would it be in there? Right? Why would it be? Or why, why would it be in there? I'll tell you why, because a child had put it in there in the one brief second when I was sitting trying to have a poo in peace after he had brushed his teeth. And I said, just go out there and I'm just going to use the toilet. Can I wear your jacket there? No, you cannot. But he did. And that, and then, yeah, and then I got nothing done yesterday and then by the time i sat down i managed to plug the lcd screen in and swear and yell at the thing because i wanted it to do some midi stuff with the computer thing that i got and because i wanted to record nev's touching waltz which we will get around to doing and everything was just shot to shit now i know you're not interested in that i don't blame you for not being interested in that but isn't it amazing how fucked up things are sometimes? Anyway, and and then I said to my wife, right, he's got to learn. He's got to learn to be a little more responsible. There are children in the world, in the third world, I tell you, starving, up chimneys, scrubbing, cleaning, and like pre-industrialized England, who are more responsible because they have to be. And this kid, he's got everything I damn well said. So I tell you what I'm going to do. I said to the wife, "I'm now shoot me down in flames if you're a child psychologist, because you'll probably disagree with this and you'll say, oh how cruel.'" I said, "I'm going to take my belt off." And no, I didn't say that at all because my pants would have fallen down. But what I said was, "Look, this is what we should do." And she goes, "But he didn't do it out of malice. He was doing dress up day at the school, and he probably just wanted to be just like you." And I said, "Yes. Well, I'm not the sort of person who would hide someone's wallet." We almost rang the bank and cancelled all the cards. And how, how, how would we have felt if, if, if we then found the wallet? I'd have felt like an idiot and we wouldn't have been able to uncancel it. She goes, well, at least I found your wallet. And I said, thank you, darling. You're the light of my life and I love you for that. Okay. And she goes, do you think you would have ever looked in there? And I said, no, I don't think I would have. Because to me, it, what, why would it be in there? That just doesn't seem sensible. So I said, this is what I think I, I'm going to do. And I said, I should take his Nintendo Wii game. And what I'll do is I'll put it in my laundry hamper, right? And when he comes home, we should just say nothing, right? Say nothing. And when he comes in to play Skylanders, and that's a whole different ball game in itself, Skylanders, mate. If your kids want Skylanders, just open up your wallet, right? Give them your bank account details, because you're just going to keep getting milked. Because every time they do something, you need a stupid little toy 
that sits on this silly little thing. And my friend Michael, who I want to defend these charges about this cabin in the woods, showed me a box of them when I went into his place. And he had like about 400 bucks worth of them. And I go, man, you're a big kid. I can understand my kid wanting them because he's only seven. But what's your excuse? Anyway, that's another story. So I said, I should take the Nintendo Wii and hide it, right? And when he comes home, we shouldn't say anything, okay? And then when he goes to play it, like, he should come, oh, where, where's my Wii? Um, I don't know. I don't know. And then I said, let him let him sweat on it for about 30 minutes, right, where we play dumb. And then at the last minute, I should go, oh, that's right. Sorry. Sorry. I Oh, how silly of me. I grabbed it during the day and tucked it away in a laundry hamper. And then I could have raised the subject of the wallet and said, see how it feels when, you know, you're panicked about something that's important to you and you you, you can't work out for the life of you where it would be because you're pretty sure you brought it home, even though now you've rung shopping centres and put people out and caused all sorts of... and wasted your entire day... When your time is precious, you see, and my wife said, no, nah, I don't feel, I really don't feel good about that. I really don't think you should do that. Now, I'm the man of the family. I'm not one of these people, I, I'm not always politically correct for the sake of being, sometimes I'm really old fashioned and I, and I dug my heels in and I said, no, oh, all right, I'll put the bloody thing back. And I did. And then, and then I, 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 I came, I, I went to pick him up from school and, oh, then there's another issue there. But anyway, should I tell you about that? This, this, there was this person, right? <laughs> I don't think, this, well, this person might hear this podcast. So I don't know if I should say this story. No, no, I won't. All right, suffice it to say, okay. So I picked up this person from school who'd won a raffle that we had had a raffle, it sold them the tickets. And then this person, I give them a lift home sometimes, a lot. And they had this huge box, like a cardboard box full of chocolate bars, little ones, all sorts of things, and some prizes. And then I said, and I thought, when I dropped them off at the thing and I still hadn't told my kid off for the wallet, I thought, I wonder if they'll offer my kid just a little chocolate bar things as, you know, it's raining and there's been lots of lifts home and they've won this prize that had actually been delivered to them and they didn't even say, oh, would you, would you little little Freddie Roy's his name, would you like a chocolate? No, they went inside and went, oh, we got chocolate, we got chocolate. And they just ran off and I thought, oh, that's nice, that's nice, that's nice. It would be nice to be offered if it was me, I'd offer. You wait till it's raining next time. I'm going to speed off up the road. But anyway... So I, I then said to him, um, I'm very angry with you. Really, are you? Why? And then I started to tell him off. And then he started to tell me off. And by the time he got home, we weren't talking. And then he walked in and slammed the door to his room. Anyway, eventually we patched it up. So I don't know. Did, was I, would, I, would my have original punishment been better? I think no. it would have been. No. Okay? Back in my day, son, I'll tell you, if I'd, if I'd take a my old man's wallet, He'd have tanned me bloody yeah, we, raw. I know, but raw. We, I know, but we don't have that mentality anymore. I know, it, it's tempting, Didn't isn't it? Didn't do but, me any harm well, whatsoever. that's debatable. You want to give that kid more of a clip around the ear hole now and again, Darby? He's walking all over you. Oh, that's easy for you to say. The minute you're in the room with him, it's like, come over to Uncle Nev. Yeah. Uncle Nev's got 50 cents for yeah, you. I'm watching He Santa. milks you good and proper. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, clip him around the ear hole. Well, He's got you wrapped around his little finger. And he loves your songs, by the way, too, Nev. Yeah, no, he's got good taste in music and everything. It's not, it's, listen, I'm like his uncle Neville. It's not, it's not my job to give the little bastard a belt, and it's your job to do that. I'm kind of like, you know, his favourite uncle. That's the thing, and, and I like the way he loves me songs. Yeah, get him all roused up, and then hand him back to me. Thanks, Nev. Now, quickly, whilst we're at it, I'm going to call this uh, fundamental preacher from the Carmel Welsh Presbyterian Church, Reverend Bob Gray, the one I got into a stoush with on the radio. I'll see if uh, I can talk him into coming on to the next podcast and get his permission, see if we can get this call to go to air. Okay? Any second now. Hello? Is that you, is that you Bob? Yes, it is. Now, g'day, it's Rob Darby calling you. How are you? 
I'm not bad. I um, I was calling back to see how you went with that um, with that thing about the uh, debate. Yes, uh, I um, have uh, uh, put that before the uh, the um, directors of uh, of the um, radio station and. Uh, I'm waiting to hear back from them. So I've got your number in the um, in my book, and I'll call you as soon as it's organised. Well, if they doesn't work, would you consent to appearing on my podcast? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm I'm quite happy with that any time. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You would? Okay. Well, I'm actually yeah. just I'm re- I'm just recording this now. When is a good time for you? Uh, well, um, uh, probably. At the moment, I'm 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 in uh, Wendery Village all this week, or stock around Wendery, uh, with our little store for our work in the Philippines. Okay. Um, but um, but uh, a, uh, a Sunday afternoon when I'm not on the radio is probably the the better one. Yep. Okay. Uh, because I finish uh, my um, my. Uh, uh, church service at about 11.30 and then we have a cup of tea afterwards so I'm, I'm usually on radio at about 12 but that's always a bit of a push so um, probably from about 1 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon when I'm not on radio Well is there any time to call you during the weekdays? Yes um, the um, uh, usually um I'm 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 free of a of a Wednesday morning. Yes. Unless I'm called to something in the hospital or 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 a funeral or something like that. But usually I uh, have my Wednesday morning free for preparation, so uh, that's usually uh, that's usually a, a time on the weekday when when I'm relatively free. Okay, do you want me to come to you, or do you want to come to me, or do you want to do it well, on the it would phone? Be better, it would be better if you could. Um, I, uh, I would uh, uh, welcome that. Uh, where You know where we are. Yeah, that's at the church. Yes, well, we're beside it. Okay. Um, if, you, if you pass on the same property, but if you pass the church, we're on the Bunanyong side of the church. Okay. Well, it's well back from the road. There's a brick, a new brick, uh, a manse there. Uh, that's where we are. Okay. Um, all right. Well, how about uh, I'll give you a call on Wednesday morning and try to be That'd there. That'd be fine. That 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 would be fine. About nine thirty. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I will talk to you then. Okay. Now, thank are, you. Are, you, are you happy for this call to be put onto this podcast just to let people know that you're coming? Oh yes, I, I have, I have no problem with that at all. Okay, all right. Well, I shall keep this. Now, up. I mean, my 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 opinion is mine, and I've held it for a long time, and okay. I've made it very clear that it's my opinion. It may not be the opinion of the church, it may not be the opinion of the radio station, but it's mine, so it can go forward in my name, and uh, I'm, okay. I'm perfectly happy with that. Mm. All right, I'll bring some yeah. rec- I'll bring some recording equipment if you can just supply me with yeah. some electricity. Uh, that's no problem at all, mate. No okay, worries. Okay, I'll see you at 9.30. I'll call you on the morning anyway, but I'll see yep, you at 9.30 yep. Wednesday. Fine. Okay, really well. Bob. Thanks, Bob. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye. See you later. Yeah, bye now, bye. Bye. Now, now, actually, now I know I've seen him because I've been up at Wendery Shopping Centre. And um, and I, I, uh, I <laughs> you watch, we'll meet face-to-face and be really nice to each other. Uh, I'm go- I'm, I'll have to pop up before next Wednesday and see him because I wandered past him the other day. Actually, I've seen them there. They're just near the um, the chicken feed store, not where they sell real chicken food. You understand? But discount goods at quality prices. No, hang on, quality discount. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm I might pop up and see Bob for a bit of a pre-interview interview. Hmm. Uh, you watch. I'll I'll end up. I'll get there ready to roast him and I'll come away going. Oh, what a fabulous fella. Till next week, or the next time I post, I'll talk to you then, and we will, and we'll do it.